Megan's filming a video. What? Yeah. Okay, this video is long overdue. So many people have asked me, Megan, what do you take to the hospital? And I'm about to show you because I've been twice, so I know exactly what you need. First, I want to start with clothes. If you know how long you're planning on being there, so I was supposed to be there two weeks the first time, and I was there a lot longer. So what I have learned is always pack more, if especially if you don't think your family is going to be able to come to your laundry. And even if they are, pack extra. So let's get started. I'm just going to start with clothes. I have a sweatshirt on top, just my off cam alumni sweatshirt. Um, it's it temperatures vary in hospitals. You never know what the temperature is going to be in the morning. You might be cold when you go to breakfast or whatever. So just having a sweatshirt, I learned that it's just a good way to be cozy when it might be colder. Okay, now we're going to move on to shirts. I'm not including like underwear socks and like undergarments in this video just assume that you need them i am going to include just what i know is like a basic need for everyone so loose shirts if you're getting your pump placed loose shirts you're going to want the loosest shirts you can find don't don't go out and buy unless you just don't have like don't go buy extra large shirts like if that's not your size just go through your closet and find soft loose shirts so this is a soft loose it's got elastic at the bottom but it's super soft and loose it is thin but it's just soft and loose and it was so good for when i had my pump plus you'll have an abdominal binder on and i'll show you that later on in the video and you don't want like tight clothes on the next option again is just soft and like stretchy so if it can stretch it's going to be comfortable and this is just a three quarter length again stretchy soft uh red shirt and i'm going to turn it upside down and kind of show you how stretchy it is so see it stretches um and it's just really comfortable to have over your pump and have under your abdominal binder just stretchy soft shirts even the shirt i have on it's like a t-shirt um it's loose around the like around the belly area so it's comfortable as far as pants go you want like a sweat pant or like a yoga pant situation for girls these are my yoga pant capris um the waistband on my yoga pants I like it because you're not going to want something really tight around your waist. So it's it's nice and comfortable. But as far as the sweatpants, um, they're just loose and they're easy to pull down. Um, but you also want to have a pant that's easy for your therapist to move up and down and out Honestly, of the Don't way. worry about what you look like in the hospital because everyone either A, looks awful in there, or B they just don't feel like looking their best like no one wants to look their best in the hospital unless you do and by all means you do you and then the last thing i'm as far as clothes i'm going to include um just pajamas just any type of pajamas make sure um that they're not too long for you because that'll make your nurses a nervous wreck you know they want you to be safe um and if you don't have anybody hem them um there's tutorials on Pinterest or whatever to hem your pajamas. Uh, and honestly, I'm going to be completely honest. The first two days, I didn't wear pants. Because, like, pants, like, to sleep in. Because I just didn't want anything on my, near my belly. I just wanted to be free and open. So, didn't wear pants. One thing that I learned that I wish I would have known the first time is... I have a really small foot. I already knew that. That's not what I learned. But I have a really small foot. And the grippy socks the hospital gives you, um, they don't, they did not have a small size for me. So the size they gave me was a small, but my foot just slid out of it because I, I wear a size six shoe. So basically I wear size kids socks basically. Um, so I brought my own grippy socks. This is what they're going to want you to wear 
Um, anytime you get up out of your hospital bed is grippy socks. At least my hospital. By the way, these are all based off like what my hospital did. So just, I guess, I assume they're all going to be the same basically, but just grippy socks. You can get these at like a dollar store or Dollar Tree, um, Walmart, you know. And I got several pair because they always want you to get up. Um, you know, when you have to get up to go to the bathroom or whatever with them, and if they have you walking, they're going to want you to wear grippy socks. One thing I learned the first time is that bring your own grippy socks because you're going to need it. Moving on. I don't know about the guys that are watching. If there's any guys watching this video, hey, sorry. It's more of a girly oriented video. I have things monogrammed of course if you know me everything I have is pretty much monogrammed so I've got my name on this like toiletry bag um and this is from 31 in case you're wondering but guys you don't if if you don't have your name on something it's not a big deal I just brought my stuff with my monograms on it because a that's what I have and b if you're sharing a room with some somebody it makes it easier for your nurses to like go to your stuff if they need to get something for you. So these are my toiletries. Now everybody's going to have this. If you don't want to bring any of this, that's fine. Girls, don't bring makeup. It doesn't matter unless you want to. If that makes you feel pretty, you bring makeup. That's all up to you. I didn't bring any makeup. I just brought my hair stuff um, because I didn't bring a straightener. I didn't straighten my hair the whole time I was in the hospital because you can't lift your arms above your head. Um, and so it's really no point. Um, but I just brought my typical routine stuff. So the first thing I brought um, is the Aussie Hair Insurance Heat Protectant. Even though I didn't use heat, it was just part of my after shower routine. So I brought it. Um, the next thing, I obviously brought deodorant. Um, you'll need it. If you're anything like me and sweat a lot, you'll need it after therapy and before. This is just the oil I put in my hair. Um, it's Herbal Essences Wild Naturals Oil Elixir. Um, I just put it in my hair after I get out of the shower. Um, I brought this little cute, like, Q-tip case for after the shower just because you'll need Q-tips. Okay, this is something that I wish someone would have told me before I went to the hospital, but I didn't really think about it the first time. These are sample sizes of shampoo and conditioner. I'm using them for the sake of this video because they're easier to carry up here than having like my actual shampoo and conditioner for my shower. Bring actual full sizes and the reason I say that is because if you're there longer than two weeks, you're going to run out of this. At least I did. You get a shower every other day at my hospital and I just felt like I ran out of my sample sizes. Like my family had to bring me shampoo and stuff. So just bring your full size next thing to remember so here's my body spray it's the um endless weekend from bath and body works bring a body spray but i want you to remember this this is something that's always bothered me whatever body wash or shampoo or lotion i brought to the hospital if i use it after i get out of the hospital it just reminds me of that experience like that smell so, I did not use Endless Weekend while I was in the hospital. I used Mad About You. And to this day, if I use it, I just think about the hospital. So, unless if it's your favorite scent, I would recommend not bringing it to the hospital. Bring something totally different that you wouldn't mind missing later. That might be silly, but that's just me. And I have the matching lotion. Bring a full-size lotion. My hospital made my skin so dry. The air is dry, and I just my skin was always dry. Um, I was always asking the nurses to put lotion on my legs. It seemed like I felt really bad, but my legs and my feet and everything just got so dry. And I used lotion probably like two times a day. So bring a full size lotion. Again, bring a full size body wash. This is just my collection that I've just recently gotten as a birthday present. And I just threw it in here because it was part of the, like it fit in my bag well or whatever. I didn't have to get downstairs. Um, I, I also brought my, I just brought my regular routine stuff for after a shower. So this is my moisturizing face lotion. It's from Equate Walmart, but it's, it's compared to the Clinique, um, moisturizing lotion. Bring chapstick. Your lips will be dry. Bring nail clippers because I don't know. 
you might break a nail. I don't, I don't know. Just bring it because I snag my nail on something and they don't really have any. Bring extra hair ties or hair. Having that stuff to be prepared just makes it easier. Okay, some more like more random stuff that everybody's talking about. Megan, what in the world? Why? Trust me, I've done this. I know. So bring whatever your pain management tool is. So if you use a TENS unit or a heating pad, whatever you use for pain management, bring it. So for example, I use a heating pad for pain management. So I brought my heating pad to the hospital. It's got fuzz on it, sorry. I, bring, I brought my heating pad to the hospital the second time, not the first time because again, didn't learn these things till after the first time so bring your bring your heating pad or whatever uh, but also check with your doctor first and the hospital to make sure you can bring that in because my doctor my doctor said it was completely fine at my hospital but just make sure that your doctor's aware and they can put it in your chart that you have it that makes your nurses and your hospital staff aware that you have it and this is how you can use it that's random but you need it Bring your eyeglass case because if you wear glasses or your, if you wear contacts, number one, I don't recommend bringing your contacts to the hospital. Get some glasses. I think everybody that wears contacts has backup glasses, right? Um, if not, kudos to you because I wouldn't want to wear those all the time. But bring your glasses, number one, because you're not going to want to fool with contacts when you get up at 6 o'clock for 7 a.m. therapy. That's ridiculous you're going to be grumpy, at least at my hospital. They can throw some 7 a.m. therapies on you, and that's ridiculous. I still love my therapist, though. Just don't like the 7 a.m. therapies. This might be going without saying, but people are asking um, what's in my hospital bag, so I'm going to tell you. I bring your brace, or your braces, if you have two. This is my brace. Uh, it's got an insert. And this is what my brace looks like. I have three straps. It's just tan. Bring your brace. And bring tennis shoes. Don't bring other types of shoes. Bring tennis shoes. You don't need um, other types. thing that I want to include, this might be crazy, but this is a sock aid. Okay? If you don't know what a sock aid is, your therapist will teach you. Um, you can't bend over for six weeks, which means you can't put your socks on by yourself. If you want to be independent and you want to have higher scores, yeah, I treat it like a competitive game when I'm in the hospital. If you want to have higher, I don't remember what the scores are called, but you can get score, you're scored in therapy based on like what you can and can't do alone. So if you want to get higher scores, in therapy get you a sock aid do not buy it from your hospital that's ridiculous I got this on Amazon for like four to five dollars when the hospital wanted me to pay like 12 or 15 no get it off Amazon I'll put a link okay, down depending on your hospital where you have your surgery um, and I'm assuming everyone gets this done an abdominal binder um, I didn't wake up with one at UK UK did not give me one after the first surgery Cardinal Hill actually when I got there that night I was in a lot of pain and they were like where's her abdominal binder and I was like I don't know what you're talking about so um, I had no idea what they were talking about so they got me one from the farm like the pharmacy of the hospital and it's you just wear it around your pump um, They'll show you how to wear it. You don't need this in your hospital bag. You won't have it. Don't buy it before because it comes with your hospital stay. Third thing that I wish like that I would have had before or well kind of going along with the sock aid is called a dressing hook and I didn't really know this existed until I used it in therapy and I realized oh I'm going to order me one because it, it allowed me to put my shoes on by myself or um it just allowed me to do things that maybe I wouldn't have been able to do um, without it. It's very helpful. I don't I don't know where mine is. I wish I knew, but I'm going to post a picture on here. It's just a little wooden stick, and it's got a hook on the end, and then these weird little things on the other end. Um, I, ordered, um, I ordered mine off of Amazon, too. That was $8, whereas the hospital was way higher. 
if you could have the dressing hook and the sock aid before you go to the hospital and bring it with you, make sure you put your name on it because I don't want it to get mixed up with the other hospital. Like, if your therapist bring that in or whatever, uh, make sure it just has your name on it so it doesn't get mixed up. But th that's two things that I wish I would have had pre-surgery. And they're just like investments because eventually you're going to have to have your pump replaced anyway. Um, and I don't know what the restrictions are when you have your pump replaced if you like can't bend over for six weeks again or whatever. But those are just investments that I think are worthwhile Something to else make. I wish I would have bought pre-surgery is a grabber. And I'll post a picture because I don't have mine. I actually borrowed mine from my aunt. I know that you can find them on Amazon. And if you want me to look for a link and post it below, that's fine too. Say you drop your shirt and you can pick it up. Say you want to reach something in your closet and you pick it up. As far as being prepared for rehab, those are my main three suggestions of like purchases I think everyone should make before pump surgery. I currently don't use them anymore. I used them for my six weeks and then as soon as I could bend over, you better believe I did. And things that I didn't include in this video but I just want to mention, blanket and pillow, they have blankets in the hospital but bring like an extra soft, fuzzy, comfy blanket from home. That just makes you feel so... It made me feel so comfortable and relaxed. Favorite snacks, cause I mean, in my hospital, your your breakfast is at eight, your lunch is at twelve, and then you have dinner at five, and then you're done until the next morning. Um, I always kept my favorite snacks in the bottom drawer of the dresser that they had in the room. Um, my family would bring me snacks or say that they had like chips at lunch, and I didn't eat my chips. I would stash them in my room, or I would ask the nurses if they could order pudding from the um, cafeteria and then I would stash it in my room or put my name on it and put it in the fridge just like think about what your favorite snacks are because I'm sorry but if I eat at five I'm gonna get hungry before I go to bed or bring cash um, because they have vending machines bring headphones I brought headphones because I didn't know if I'd be sharing a room with another person I didn't want to be annoying with my video you know I watch YouTube all the time and um, I watched Netflix on my iPad when I was in the hospital. Like, bring some type of entertainment. Um, I brought my, t my iPad, obviously, and I have my phone, and I downloaded some games. But your hospital should have Wi-Fi, so you can download games there, too. Um, bring your medicine. Um, bring it in, like, a little bag. Um, and then the d once the doctors see all of it or whatever, they'll have your parents or whoever is with you your spouse or whatever, they'll have them take it home with them because you don't really need it. The pharmacy provides it. Something else that applies to everyone, at my hospital you only got showers every other day. Depending on what your bowel movements are like um, and as they're managing how they're going to be um, with your pain medicine, you might want to bring some type of like baby wipe or flushable wipe because things can get real messy real quick when they're trying to manage your bowel medicine. That's it guys. I think that that is all for my hospital bag video. I hope that it was helpful. I hope it wasn't too girly related for the guys out there that are going to have uh, pump surgery. I hope this video is helpful. I hope that I included everything and make you feel more stress-free about packing for your hospital stay. Our next video is either going to be a pump date because we need to do one or two it's going to be a Q&A, a pump Q&A. If you have any questions about like surgery, after surgery, what to expect in rehab, any questions that are pump related, please email me, leave them in the comments below, Instagram me, whatever you can figure out how to contact me leave your comments with the questions so I can put them in my phone so that I can answer questions. And thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. Bye.